oh, I'll have a little boost. And it's odd mana, and so is that. And that's annoying because the event hits odds or evens. Left corner, right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left corner. You know that DVD logo from The Office? Oh, will it ever hit the corner, guys? Oh, no. Oh, it's going to hit the corner. No. Oh, no. Oh, it, it. No, no corners hit. Oh. This doggy is the best doggy I've ever seen. So Kunaro's Hand of Adros is pretty awesome. This is probably one of the best Voltron enablers I've ever seen. It's got Vigilance Menace Lifelink, which is probably the best combination for Voltron star decks ever. And it's got even more words. Creatures can't enter the battlefield from graveyards, which is really good against Reanimator, Escape, Kroxa, so many other things. And it also has players can't cast spells from graveyards, which is pretty relevant as well when people playing Muldrotha, stuff like that. It's really quite relevant and it's only gotten more relevant as time's gone on and he looks super cute super awesome you want to give it all your best weapons we have quite a spike which is pretty sick if it hits somebody with this they lose half their life after the damage is dealt we also have packed weapon which is kind of interesting as well you have to discard a card in order to equip it but then whenever it attacks you draw a card reveal it and it, the creature gets plus x plus x until turn, and you lose x life where x is that card's mana value so if you top deck something like i don't know kaya it's going to get a huge boost you'll lose the life but it's got life link which means he'll gain the life back so it basically says draw a card get a huge boost it's pretty sick let's see if we can pull this off i never have done this before but yeah this is a super cool deck hope you enjoy okay pretty sweet hand against giada we have a few kill spells already for her so yeah we got to keep two kills although this kills none angels ironically I oh, know she is an angel. She doesn't really look like an angel, but... Look like an angel. What have we got? Oh, dear. Wowzers. Um, I guess we get rid of the sword. See any removal spell they have early to deal with Kunaros, but my goodness. <laughs> That's... Yeah. It's a pretty decent hand. Authority of the console is going to make our stuff come in tapped. Oh, Campbell's pretty good. Uh, is it though? Yeah, I guess. It's fine. It's fine. Nothing too amazing, but... Uh, let's go here. So they're an angel deck, but it feels awfully controlly for an angel deck. Roaming throne. What triggers are they getting from this? Oh, just an extra... Dude, come on. <laughs> I just killed you. Come on, at one time, man. Come on. Slightly risky hand, but I do think I want to keep this. Ruther gets to copy spells. Wonder how impactful that's going to be here. If we keep getting land drops, this should be good to curve out pretty nicely. Mindstone. That's a shame. We can't play that here. That would have been actually perfect. Guardian Idol, so it looks like they're ramping. Let's give them more issue mentor. Keeping this alive is gonna be great. Might be able to win the game with just the mentor itself. And given that the rest of our hand is non creature spells, we should be getting a fair few um monks from this. Okay, so Storm Kiln Artist. Um, this is going to look really weird, what I'm doing here. But I need to lose a permanent. So I can kill the Storm Kiln Artist. Because I don't want it to survive. This is an actual win con in itself. I think that was a fine play. I was thinking I would have to sack the Mindstone before I could do that, but ugh, Gold Spam Dragon. That is not fun. That is not good to see on the field. Siege Veteran. Yeah, we go for Archangel Elspeth, I think. Hmm, so now... I think we'll just create a body. Swing in. 
It's annoying how it's always a gold span dragon that kind of brings these slow control decks out from nowhere. It's all it doesn't seem to be any other cards people seem to use. It's wow, they don't care about us our walker at all. They must have something crazy here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Nine mana. They can cyclonic rift. Ruther. Copy a spell. Wow. Now I'm not sure what to do. Maybe we go for this on Ruther. <clears throat> so many triggers. So that resolves. We might be able to kill Ruther, but they probably have a response here. They're going to counter it. Okay, fine. Still a lot of triggers, though. Um, put some counters on here. It will swing with everything. So they block that. They block this. Ah, yeah, let's just get really aggressive here. So they are going to block one of those. Down to three. Okay. Do they have an answer? If they rift us, I think we're just doomed because we just only have three lands. And we, we're not going to be able to recover from that, to be honest. Or a big board wipe of some kind. Unexpected windfall. Is that going to cut it? I do wonder if... Hmm. I mean, they've got a lot of mana here. That's eight mana. That's 12 mana. That is a hell of a lot of mana. But will it save them? We have lethal on board. They have to kill three of our creatures. Four of our creatures. And we have an Archangel Elspeth that can put two counters on something as well. So they have to kill every creature, actually. They cannot leave a single creature alive. Here. Will that be... Do they have it? Surely. Surely out of five unknown cards. There will be one removal spell or something, right? I guess they might have... Yeah, not enough. Because, yeah, what, as I said, one removal spell wouldn't be enough. It has to be a board wipe, basically. Explosion. Okay. My god. My god. They drew so many cards there. It still wasn't enough. Crazy. So I told you Monster Mentor would win me the game. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored. And because of that, the channel does need help from people like you. So if you do want to support the channel in your own way, you can like and subscribe, which is completely free. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron. And if you become a channel patron, you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. Oh, it's slivers. We don't see that very often, do we, guys? on the MTG Judge channel. Okay, let's go. Despite that, we've got a really pretty sexy hand, I have to say. Look at these cards. Black Market Connection, Sylvan Scrying. Search for land, put it into your hand. Now, I'm pretty sure this was a part of a modern deck, Sylvan Scrying, wasn't it? You'd use it to get something good. Sentinel is probably better here. Despite the fact that Lotho does ramp us, I don't know if they're going to play two spells. And I'm pretty sure they would, they're would they more likely to play a non-creature spell here on curve. But I could be wrong. They could play two spells here and absolutely show me wrong. No, nope. that feels good. Which means they're going to get first level next turn. Uh, okay, we'll go for Black Market Connections here. Kuneros is good at stopping certain things in the graveyard. So creature cards can't enter from the... It's weird. Creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't. That's what's very good. Yeah, okay. So they're going to go for black market connections. Fine. Fine. White, black, white, black. Go for more. At last, the Sith will have the revenge. Attack! Love it. I love this guy. Pumping him up. Even a small pump's nice to just give you a little boost. Oh, I love a little boost. 
and it's odd mana, and so is that, and that's annoying because the event hits odds or evens. Left corner, right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left corner. You know that DVD logo from The Office? Oh, will it ever hit the corner, guys? Oh, no. Oh, it's going to hit the corner. No. Oh, no. Oh, it, it. No, no corners hit. Oh. Rule T. Which mode they're going for? One, two, or three? Learning to count with sagas. Ah, ah, ah. They're going to get rid of Lotho, and then they're going to two to everyone. They say, what the hell? It's not even a single sliver in this deck, is there? Let's kill the cruelty of Gix. That's going to be annoying. Here for this for the following turn. So, yeah, they do see our game plan. However, um, yeah, it's that's all we can really do. They discarded the Lotho. Okay. Imagine ultimate. <laughs> this is fun. This is magic fun. Magic fun. Imagine ultimatum. Not seen this in about a couple of days. It's good fun, isn't it? Oh wow! Look at this. Uh, so we choose one to not give them. Don't know then. Suppose we don't give them farewell, so we keep our field, and then they get to play their stuff for free. Depends what's in their hand. If they have um, good stuff in the hand, then they just win. They play stuff from the top of the deck once a turn as well. Let's we'll see what they got then. What you got? What you got, mate? Anything good? Lily. Yeah, that's probably enough to win the game, isn't it? Let's just quit that. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, yeah, they just won. I don't know what else to say. I'd love to see less of that, but what are you going to do? Write a letter to Mark Rosewater? What's he going to do? Sipping champagne in his um, golden jacuzzi from selling pieces of paper with words on it. <laughs> actually, that's a good point. I wonder what Mark Rosewater thinks of Saltai Ultimatum. I would actually know. If anyone knows Mark Rosewater's thoughts on this card, tell me in the comments below because I'm just curious. I'm not even angry anymore. It's just... It's just boring. Um, I just want to think what one of the grandfathers of Magic, I feel like that's, or Richard Garfield. I don't think Richard Garfield would appreciate this, given that he he preferred classic Magic. Um, but yeah, there's a whole video, by the way, about Imagine Ultimatum. Okay, let's give this a go. Now, I got recently told off by somebody for saying this card wrong. So originally I said Amalia Benavides Aguera, but apparently it's Aguera. I, was, I don't know. I'm probably still saying it wrong. Uh, I, I apologise to anyone who speaks Spanish. I'm very sorry. I'm not Spanish myself. Um, but yeah, always happy to learn pronunciations. Uh, what do we want to do here? Let's start with the Duress. So their deck's going to be pretty low curve, given they've got Luris as the companion. Oh, thought Seas goes away. We also have Elspeth's Nightmare, which is potentially the best card against them. Once we kill all, a lot of their things, we can exile the graveyard as well. So that's pretty sick. So we want to kind of time this. Nicely time it. And also, Kunaros is really good against them as well. But they do have the Curse of Silence, which, which does slow us down a bit there. Let's give Cold Steel Heart naming white first. Get all the admin stuff down. The boring paperwork, the ramp, the rock, the duress. I mean, given all their permanents are two mana or less... Probably shouldn't be too scary, but the thing that's scaring me mostly is they can have non-permanents, which are more than two. A lot of people don't realise this. It's just permanents uh, seem to be two or less. Okay, so what's the ward cost on this? Pay three life. I have to put, pay three to put that in the hands. It's going to be a bit of a while before she goes away, I suppose. Do we just kill Amalia now, although they can recast her? Or mana. What do we give for? I'm not really sure what we go for, to be honest. I think we'll kill her now. It's going to sting a little bit. It's basically a lightning bolt to the face, which is kind of weird for the flavour, I guess. But there you go. So they've chosen to not put in the graveyard anyway, so we don't have to worry too much about that. It's a bit strange, actually, because it, surely the whole intention of having Lurus is to cast the Kalana from the graveyard. Whenever you gain life, put a counter on target creature control. This could get scary. 
This would be a lot scarier if they had Heliod out, but... Charming Prince, so I expect them to scry two lands to the top here, potentially. Man, this Curse of Silence is... is it's, it's, not, it's definitely annoying. Two to the top, so probably removal. Ooh, Monastery Mentor. I want to get Borom out first, but I feel like he can protect our guys. Monastery Mentor is pretty sick as well. Absolutely love this card. Just giving you random 1-1s one -one is pretty decent. Here she comes again. And they're going to swing in with a 1-1. One -one. Really not too bothered about that here. Blind Obedience on top of the deck. I suppose they want to use the Extort on that. Cavern of Souls. We always want to name something stupid with this. Hamsters. They're not using blue. doesn't matter. So we could just go for the Elspeth's Nightmare. Um, but I want to kill the Amalia, don't I? I think I'll kill the Amalia in their turn. Yeah, it's not the best use of mana here, but I want to surprise them. So if they attack with a Death Touch, they feel untouchable. But if we use the Fateful Absence in their turn with a surprise blocker, I'm actually more worried about this cleric class because when they put counters on their stuff, that's going to get annoying. And it also means that the Elspeth's Nightmare is not so effective if they start putting counters on all their stuff. Okay, so this is exactly what I wanted to happen. We're going to get them with our surprise 1-1 one -one here. The only downside here is that we're running out of kill spells. Bitter Triumph. Oh, that's a shame. I guess we might as well sack this. So Monastery Mentor is extra protected here. So seeing as this is now indestructible, we might as well block with this rather than losing the prowess. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Now what do they do? They're going to go for Blind Obedience. Ugh, gross. Now we're going to start to want to kind of establish the exile in our favour. Kill the Prince. It's a shame we can't do anything else here. It would have been really lovely to go for the Arch Archangel Elspeth as well. But I suppose that's going to be nice to follow up on next turn. Because we, with the Monastery Mentor out, we can also... It gives us a 1-1 one -one as well. Ah, oh, damn it. That's annoying. I suppose we will be exiling quite a chunk of their graveyard after, uh, sorry, before Lurus hits, which means that this it's going to be a terrible Lurus. Oh no, we're not exiling yet, are we? That's the next turn. Yeah, of course. Feature cards and Grievous can't enter the battlefield. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Sorry, I missed I missed time that. So we'll do this. Go for the selfless savior, and now they can't play anything from the graveyard anyway. So same difference. <clears throat> Weird graphical glitch there. I just hope they don't have any more removal. They've already used two pieces, one hand removal. Spectrum Sentinel. I feel like that extort's going to kill us. Has the potential to do that. And here's the thing, right? So... We've really kind of invalidated their Lurus in, in a way because with Kunoros and the Elspeth's Nightmare out. Ah, oh, they've got a selfless saviour. That's gross. Oh, that's so annoying with Lurus because I can keep replaying it over and over again. What does the Restless Fortress do? Attack, drain two. Okay. The 
graveyard. Would have been nice to get more things out, but that will have to do for now, I think. It's very, very tempting to put two counters on Kunaros, but I'd rather um, like establish... more blockers because especially when our blockers come and tapped it's going to be a little bit harder to okay so this has got menace you're not going to, be able to do that mate go to 18 sweet come on we're running out of resources well we, we have we've completely run out of card draw so we need something good especially when they have this silly one mana uncommon that can just really get out of hand So here we go. They're going to start doing the life gain train. And they've got their own restless fortress. Absolute copycats there. Oh, day of judgment. We could legit do that. I think we're going to do that. Make him invincible. So he's indestructible until end of turn. Right. Put two counters on him. We're going to start the beatdowns here. Spread your wings. That was actually a pretty good top deck, given that we had the dog. And I know that they can just go lure us, and if they kill our Kunaros, they can get rid of all our stuff, but... Uh, sorry, they can, they can keep replaying their stuff, but yeah. The Silver Saviour will be, I guess, protecting one of their things, but... I suppose Day of Judgment just kills two of theirs. Oh well. Protecting the Sentinel. Okay. Does that mean that our Archangel Elspeth is... Dead this turn? Hmm. Potentially, if they give for blind obedience, extort, and then the Spectrum Sentinel. What's that got? Protection from multicolored, yeah, so they can get through our Kunaros. Oh, that's annoying. Hopefully, they don't see that play, though. Oh, gross. That blind obedience, I said that's going to get us. They're not going to extort. Okay, they've seen the play. Damn it. We really needed that Elspeth to keep us in the game. What? They didn't attack? What if we get even more aggressive then? One, four. It's probably better to make blockers, though. I think that would be just a bit too aggressive. Although... Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, I don't know why I attacked there. Yep, that was stupid. That was a very stupid attack, yeah. For some reason, I thought it had flying. Nope, it really doesn't, does it? Yeah, that's a humongous mistake. Humongous mistake there. In my head, I thought, I, no, okay, screw, I, I've messed up. I've messed up. Lose a million subscribers now. I don't even have that many, so I can't lose that many, I suppose. So I guess the thing we're most worried about here is um, removal. As soon as that happens, we... We won't be able to keep their creatures off the field. Blood artist. Oh, jeez. I mean, I, do you know what? You know what the weird thing is, though. Somehow we're still in the game despite making a critical mistake. I guess we'll just keep making blockers. 
swinging over the top. I swear to God they're not using the Spectrum Sentinel. Protection from multicolor. Do they know how that works? <laughs> they could have killed our ultimate long ago. We should be dead. We should be categorically dead due to my fatal error. My error 404. There is no way on earth I should be alive here. No way. I suppose the pride mate's getting big enough to slaughter us by itself, so... It probably doesn't matter at this point. Wow. That was a pretty crazy... That was a pretty crazy top deck. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, how are we getting away with this, guys? They're gonna gain life. Okay, god damn it. God damn it, that's annoying because now they can scry. Yeah, I should have just blown up the field. Although the blood artist will um gain them loads here anyway. <clears throat> that freaking blood artist, man. It's gonna gain them loads. What? How did we win that? That was absolutely ridiculous. We, sh we really shouldn't have won that. What was in our field? I just want to see what was in the field for the Ellsworth ultimate. Only the dog would have come back. But yeah, my God, this should have died. Yeah, weird game. But um, nonetheless, I like to keep these in. Mistakes happen. I'm not faking it like CGB and LVD. A couple of fakers. Only showing wins. What's that about? Come on, guys. Think how many subscribers they've got that think they only win. That's just, that's just crazy. It's impossible. Um, but yeah, this kind of stuff probably happens a lot with those two. They just, they just don't show it. And it is sad in a way because when they create a deck, even if it's bad, I've been told by sources, numerous sources that people will still make the decks, even if they just show the wins. And actually it's just one tenth of the reality of it. But, but yeah, um, this is, this is the point I'm trying to make. Mistakes don't always mean you're going to lose. It's literally impossible to play Magic Gathering without ever making a single mistake. And also learning from them is, is important. Uh, if, if you never make mistakes, you'll never learn. And that's the crux of this channel. That's exactly what this channel is. I'm not trying to pretend. Each one of my videos tries to include at least one loss. Just to show you the whole tapestry of, of a commander. Um, so, yeah, that's it really. That's just what I want to say. Just don't believe don't believe what you, what you see, guys. It's not always as true as you think. So this commander has aged super well. I think when it first came out, it was a bit underwhelming. I think because Theros Beyond Death there's a lot of really powerful cards in that set that weren't that that were just overshadowed sorry overshadowing stuff like this the lesser rares but i think given how times progressed especially on arena specifically given the card pools increase in size we're seeing the viability of a lot of the older ones come up to scratch now and i love that i like it when old becomes new again and this really does so many things in so many directions it's crazy to think how many words are actually on this rare I mean, even to this day, it's still quite a lot. I mean, you've got Questing Beast with even more words, but this is decent for three mana, you know, so you can't really complain. It doesn't give you card advantage as such, but it, it makes it tricky for your opponent to play around, especially when this isn't that appealing of a target to kill against a lot of other threats. But, uh, sorry, my mouse just accidentally hovered onto Liliana Vale there, which is obviously an absolutely crazy card. But yeah, once you combine this with Voltron-style cards, it works really well. And I've discovered, I mean, maybe not immediately recently but yeah it, it, obviously cheaper commanders work better for voltron because you need to have the body for the swords and that's what we've got you know sword of once in future sword of forge of frontier and fire and ice in here all you know we all know how powerful these are um quite a spike proven to be pretty insane as well attacking them the, the menace makes us such a good voltron commander they can't block it they don't want to block it, it gives this gives it death touch as well and then it hits them it halves their life incredible and Daryl's really nice just to give you just three power is, is insane. It, it really is a lot. It kind of says double strike in, in a weird random amount of way. Even better on creatures with less than three power because more than double strike at that point. But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised how effective this deck was. I think it the win rate was, was decent. You know, I had a lot of fun playing it. It, um, yeah, the wins were pretty good. If you do want to create anything like this with equipment, then yeah, you want to use SRAM. There's probably a few other things that trigger with equipments as well. But yeah, I think with this particular build, 
worked out pretty well with just SRAM. You want to include things that save your dark guys from dying as well. So you've got Selfless Savior. I always say this. It's probably getting old by now. Selfless Samurai. It's really good. Selfless Spirit. All the things that say sack it to give one of your creatures protection. It's just really nice. And I feel like I'm the only one that uses these cards in conjunction with commanders just because it, the down payment is there. Why would you want to play something like if you don't have the mana up, you you can't use the defensive instance instant cards very easily. And I think when people play blue, it that gets instilled in them. It certainly did with me when I first played magic. And then I discovered Grixis Control, which I realised wasn't about countering at all, really. It's about putting threats down and applying pressure each turn. And that kind of made me a better person, because I used to be more tap, sorry, draw, go, blue, control. And then you try different colours and you realise that, you just realise how the game works in the infrastructure of the game, how game flow works, how different colours excel different things. But yeah, it's nice to just have the defensive things on board. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. And support for this deck is really good because the curve is so low, really aggressive. You know, Monster Mentor saw there doing so much work by himself. It's one of my favourite cards of all time. So freaking good. And Archangel Ellsworth as well, proving to be really just a standout card. It's so good. Making blockers every single time on lifelink. It's really, really incredible. Even in the minus, it doesn't always hit. Um, I think the plus one and the minus two on this are actually enough to make it wonderful card but yeah i think you'll have a really good time using this it's randomly hoses graveyard decks it randomly hoses um yeah basically graveyard decks and just people just probably wouldn't see this coming i've never seen them on the ladder i don't think ever maybe once in four-ish years um but that was a long time ago i was from but yeah i think you'll you do well with this deck and yeah that list is in the description below as always if you want to support the channel um um, I know it's kind of odd me saying this, but yeah, the details are below. Uh, Kofi, Patreon, get your own custom video, check it out, and uh, watch more of my videos, of course. Thank you. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.